Sifting through the shithole that is known as seasonal anime has always felt very hit or miss for me. Sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. And it just seems like the harder I try to find a good show, the more it starts to feel like a chore and not like an actual enjoyable experience. But lucky for you guys, us YouTubers will do all the work for you. So all you gotta do is sit back, relax, and watch this entire video. As I said earlier, summer anime has been pretty meh this season. Other than a couple of decent shows like Case Study of Vanitas, Remake Our Life, and the absolute pinnacle of sophistication and class known as Girlfriend Girlfriend, there just hasn't been anything that really caught my attention. But there is one show that I watched recently that I can definitely tell stands out from the rest. And that is the newest anime by Studio Madhouse known as Sunny Boy. Straight into the first few minutes of Sunny Boy, you can definitely tell this is not your average anime. The artistic yet simplistic animation style sets the tone very early that this will be an intriguing and almost hallucinogenic experience. Also, it doesn't have any ridiculous anime tropes like waifus, oblivious main characters, beach episodes, ridiculous superpowers, and truck coons that can send you into another dimension. Wait. You're telling me they did get sent to another dimension? So you're telling me this is a fucking isekai? It also has a beach episode? And the main character is oblivious? And it has waifus? Damn dude. Maybe I actually need to start doing research before hitting record for these videos. But on a more serious note, the way Sunny Boy opens is a really distinct and interesting concept. To put it simply, a group of students and their school are shifted into another dimension. And these students struggle to understand where they are and why this has even happened in the first place, as well as learn to deal with a new type of experimental society that they find themselves in. So they eventually try to govern themselves by administering new rules and regulations, but as you can expect, that doesn't go very well. Additionally, they're also dealing with the fact that most of these kids were granted superhuman abilities to go along with being shifted into another reality. And teenagers are just gonna be teenagers. So most of them end up not caring about these rules at all because they think they're extremely special or something. It's almost like being given powers makes you think you're cool. What an absolutely ridiculous claim. Like, have you watched any anime before? Just because you have powers doesn't mean you're special. I mean, have you seen My Hero Academia? Some of these dudes got the absolute worst quirk of all time. Like, look at this. If this was my power, I'd be crying myself to sleep every night. So factoring in people having superpowered abilities was not something they were ready for. I mean, honestly, if I could literally distort reality with my mind, I probably wouldn't give two shits about some dumb rules either. That aside, after watching the first couple of episodes of this show, the plot seems like it could develop into something very interesting. But if they aren't careful, I think it could easily end up being repetitive and confusing. I'm hoping for the former though. The good thing is, so far, it seems like they have a nice rhythm. As we go deeper into the story, it's revealed that they actually get trapped inside multiple different realities. And each reality has its own laws and rules in addition to the ones they already tried to establish themselves. I know it's a bit confusing, but just stay with me. The rules for each of these realities tend to be really odd. The first reality enacts a penalty on people who break the rules created by the students. Weird, I know. The second reality will burst into flames any object that isn't obtained through an economic trade or deal. I can see this trope really expanding and forcing the students to learn to adapt to anything life throws at them. The show also puts emphasis on the emotions and philosophies of each individual character. Damn, that was kind of a tongue twister. The cast has a wide range of personality types ranging from the outgoing and athletic cool kids to the more reserved and outcasted students. And these personality types factor in heavily with how they're integrated into their new society. You also get to see how having these abilities affects the way each person who gets them thinks. Hello there. Well, it seems like you're about halfway through this video. Statistically, you probably aren't subscribed to my channel. So what I'm gonna need you to do is subscribe to the channel and smash like on this video. And that's it. Now back to your regularly scheduled video. Moving on to another important thing about Sunny Boy is it's an anime original done by Studio Madhouse. If you know anything about Studio Madhouse, they were an extremely popular and highly regarded animation studio back in the early 2000s to mid 2010s. They brought us a lot of classics like Death Note, 
Monster, Hajime no Ippo, Perfect Blue, Nana, and most recently their hits were Parasite and One Punch Man. The problem is Madhouse has actually declined a lot in quality since around 2015 when One Punch Man aired. But after watching a few episodes of Sunny Boy, this could be the show that easily brings Madhouse back to the forefront of anime. And speaking of One Punch Man, the director of this anime is actually Shingo Natsume, who if you don't know was the director of this. Also the director of this. Shingo Natsume was essentially responsible for the amazing direction that One Punch Man Season 1 was known for. And like I said earlier, One Punch Man was honestly the last show that Madhouse got a lot of recognition for. So he is again teaming up with Madhouse to hopefully create that same magic. He even worked as a key animator on projects like Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood and Mob Psycho 100. And just based off his directing of One Punch Man and Space Dandy, we could see some crazy things happening in the direction of this story. And maybe even see some badass Sakuga and fight scenes. And by now you guys know I'm an absolute sucker for some amazing animation. So if we get anything like what I know Shingo Natsume is capable of, it'll just make this show that much better. There are a few other notable staff members that make Sunny Boy even more attractive. The art director, Mari Fujino, worked on stuff like Dororo, Devilman Crybaby, and Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works. And all three of those, in my opinion, are banger anime. And character designer Hisashi Iguchi is known for his work on Perfect Blue. So it seems the staff is in very good hands for Sunny Boy. This show is easily my favorite anime I'm watching this summer. And fall is supposed to be a really stacked season, but for now, if you want to watch a nice and interesting and thought-provoking show, IK Corp Anime, give Sunny Boy the stamp of approval. So if you actually watch this whole video, that means you definitely need to go watch Sunny Boy now. Because that means you actually have an attention span. I mean, you just sat through this whole video of me rambling about an anime. That's it for me guys, it's been K Corp Anime, thanks for watching.